What is going on everybody? We're in part seven today and we're gonna discuss how to warm up properly. That way you can stay injury free in the gym and they're not spending a ton of time doing warm ups that really aren't doing a ton. So maybe this is you, maybe you, you notice you're always hurt in the gym or maybe you're spending a lot of time doing your warm ups, you're gonna be static stretching, you're on the treadmill, whatever it may be, you have a lot of time devoted there, but you're really not seeing better results in terms of feel better, moving better, and your strength's not going up at the same time. So we're gonna discuss exactly how to warm up what to do, how to structure it in just five minutes. So it's gonna be five minute warmups you can do, and I guarantee these warmups will be better than running the treble for 10 minutes where you're not gonna see um, as such optimal results. So first off, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe as this is gonna be part seven of our series to how to dominate the weight room. So go back, listen to part one all the way through. I'm taking you A to Z to ditch the stuff and belly fat, get stronger, get bigger arms. So go back and watch all the videos as we're kind of into part seven today. So the very first thing you need to warm up, and I can actually show you the drills of what we're gonna do. We're gonna do three drills for lower, three drills for upper body. But first off, what the, the most important thing you need to do in a warm up is to be able to rotate at the hips and rotate at the mid back. And that's by far the most important thing. And we wanna do this actively. So what we don't wanna do is basically just kinda of hold stretches or run the treble for 10 minutes. And don't get me wrong, like it's not a bad thing to do, run the treble for a little bit as it gets the blood flow going, it gets your heart rate up. But it's simply not ideal because we're just not mastering the movement in which we want to accomplish. Like if we're in the squat, we want to focus on exercises that move the hips so we get in a good squat position, for example. And rotation will be the key to any warm up, especially in the hips. So why is movement important? Yeah, important and then we're actually gonna get to the warm up. So I'm not a huge car guy, but a car is a good analogy here, so kind of bear with me. Think of your body as like a car. If something's out of alignment and it doesn't move correctly or it's not aligned correctly in the car, it's gonna take a lot more beating to one side of the car and this is where you get issues. The same thing happens when we lose mobility at a particular joint and for a lot of us, it's our hips and mid back. So if we actually lose mobility, especially rotation in our hips, what happens is we actually get more stress to the joint below, so our knees, and the joints above, our lower back, or the mid-back, because the mid-back can't rotate, and maybe you're like a golfer or a baseball player, or obviously in this case, you're just working out. Uh, if we can't rotate well the mid-back, again, the shoulder's gonna compensate more, the lower back's gonna turn more. So it's, in, it's extremely important to make sure our hips and mid-back rotate extremely well and again think of that car analogy is something's out of alignment and something's not functioning properly we're just going to shift more emphasis to the wrong parts of the car it's going to be a lot more stress which leads to breakdown so think the exact same thing when it comes to the to the, the, the body and uh, preparing yourself to make sure the joints are ready to go so we're going to do lower body warm up first we'll do upper body after and you guys can simply do these in about five minutes it's that simple three moves, you don't have to spend a ton of time in the treadmill, you don't have to static stretch forever. Five minutes, three key warm-ups, you'll move better, and you're just gonna feel better overall. The very first thing, the very first movement you're gonna do is what's called an adductor rock back. So hopefully you can see me okay. But basically you wanna be your heel aligned to your knee back here, chest nice and tall, you wanna push this knee open. So make sure that knee's not kinda of caved in here. You can definitely want to a kettlebell if that kinda of helps you with balance or a dumbbell. Stay nice and tall, that's another big key. You're gonna lean in all the way through and then come back. Lean in, come back. And where you should kind of really feel this is obviously your inner thighs, like your groin area right here. The cool part about it as well, you're getting ankle mobility. So think of a squat, right? When we, if we go down like a deep squat, we need that knee to go over the toe. So this is gonna be great preference for squat and these are the deadlift really. This is gonna be a fantastic thing you can do. So you're staying square, I'm not side bending, I'm nice and tall, and I'm kind of hanging out here for half a second, and I'm just going back and forth. Eight to 10 per side, that's all you need. That's one, number one, to get the hips rotated in that externally rotated position of the hips, and kind of maybe turn out that way. And you can have trail leg, you can kind of turn it in a little bit if you want to get out work the rotation on that, uh, on that back leg there. The second thing we're gonna do is a 90-90, and we're gonna do this passively, First, meaning to control our hands, and then we can always progress to, to active movements, meaning without the use of our hands or our body. So what you basically do, you want a 90 degree angle at the hip, to the knee, to the foot. So right about 90 degree angle right here, and then 90 degrees roughly at the back leg. So again, the first thing we can do with our hands to start, 
chest nice and tall. You're gonna lean forward and drive your knee down to the ground as hard as you can, but make sure you're breathing. And then when you come there, you're gonna come up and you're gonna twist and rotate to that trail leg. And you should almost look a bit of a cramp right here. So again, I'm coming here. I'm not leaning down like that. I'm keeping my chest tall. I'm pushing forward and you should feel a good stretch in that glute area and maybe a little bit of the inner thigh. Come back and then twist. And I want you to do this about 30 seconds per side, give or take. So about one minute in total, you can basically hang out in that position. Flip sides off so when you're done, you might notice one side's a little bit stiffer than the other. That's 100% normal, uh, but it just tells you right there you have a bit of a deficiency on one side, which again, thinking of the car example, could be potentially to stress on one part of the body. Uh, once you've progressed that, by the way, you can definitely do it hands off if you're you know pretty comfortable with it. But definitely start hands on for now, just to make sure you get the feel for the movements. Now the third one, this can be a little tricky to demo because I don't want really to have something to stabilize here. But it's gonna hit the airplane, and again, hope you guys can see me, okay? So basically, pretend there's like a wall right here, or you have something to hold on to. What you're basically gonna do, you're gonna get this leg straight back. So kick this leg straight back. You're gonna hold on to you know the wall in front of you. You're gonna twist and rotate. So think like you're turning your torso like all the way up as far as you can until you feel a stretch in your thigh. You hold that for three to five seconds, and then you're gonna turn the opposite way. So turn here, push your torso that way. So it's, if this is straight, if it's that way, I'm turning my torso this way. And you're just opening and rotating back and forth. And what this is basically doing is really working on hip rotation, but you're doing it more of a controlled fashion where the glutes kind of turning on and helping you uh, stabilize in that process. So again, one more time, I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna twist. Open up and twist. And you can rock out eight per side, give or take. If that's hard to see, I know probably the light is the greatest, the, the angle is the greatest. Google hip assisted airplane and you get a better visual um, if this is a little bit harder to see. But that's your lower body warm up. All it is is three moves. It's gonna take about five minutes in total. It's that simple. And you should be squatting deeper, devil's looking better, lunge will be better, all your moves will be a lot better, and you're not spending 10 to 15 minutes on the treadmill. Upper body. Let's pretend this is a foam roller. I, I don't want to film in the gym, I find it awkward. So I just kind of film my condo, so kind of bear with me here. So pretend this is a foam roller or you have any sort of thing that can kind of prop you up. The first thing we need to do is get our mid back extended. Cause a lot of us are in like this position, right? Like I'm more exaggerated of course, but just think if we're like at a desk job all day or we're on our phones or on the computer, whatever it might be, we're constantly in this position. And if we try to like press overhead, just think, right? If you're here, you're not gonna get much range of motion. So what we wanna do for our upper back warm-ups is kind of get that mid back extended. And again, we wanna rotate side to side. If we get that, it's gonna be a game changer for your shoulders, it's gonna be a game changer, even getting your chest involved, right? Like it's hard to train chest if we're like this, but if we can open up more, get the chest in front because of better mobility, you just see better results for your chest. And um, stay injury free at the same time. So again, pretend this is the foam roll. This is the uh, the pillow here. But get your foam roll, put it on your mid back. So not your lower back, put it on your mid back. Chin's gonna be tucked, hands on your head. You're gonna teeter totter your body over the foam roll. So get a bit of an arch your lower back. Just a touch, not too much. Keep your core pretty tight. You want to exhale and then come back all the way through. Big exhale and then come back. And that's all you're doing for maybe eight, 10 reps you wanna push a little bit. So rear up that mid back area and that's gonna really help open up your spine and you're just gonna put you in a better position to press or do any sort of motion, even uh, even for your back, for example, right? It's hard to roll for like that, but if we're here, we're in a good position, you're gonna feel a lot better engagement for your upper back. So that's number one. Number two is gonna open and close the buck. So we wanna do here, one leg in front, one leg in back. Hands are closed in this position, and what you're gonna do is open towards the open side. So like this would be the closed side, for example, because this leg's in front. So you're gonna open towards the open side, follow with the eyes, and you're just moving back and forth. Just make sure this knee, you're not kind of caving in here. If knee's caving in, it's just a telltale sign your lower back's rotating too much. We want the rotation to come through your mid back. So you're just going, back and forth, nice control. And one key note, just make sure you're not dipping down. That's very lat dominant. 
you want to be as horizontal as you can to the shoulder. That way you get the mid back rotating exactly where it should be. Eight per side, that should be the trick. You want to do 10 again, that's fine, but eight to 10 per side to really get that rotation in the mid back. Once we're in those, both, uh, those two things, we want to integrate it now. So very similar to the hip airplane. Now we want to do a motion that kind of preps us for maybe an overhead press or a bench press or an incline press, whatever it might be. And this is going to be a floor angel slash wall angel. So floor angel, if you're not familiar, lower back speed flat. So make sure you're not arched too much. Keep it relatively flat black or back, not black. You're going to come right here. Arms going to be against the, the, the floor the best you can. And from here, you're going to try to slide your arms up as you can. I'm feeling step phase is kind of all I got. But ideally, you want to get it here with your arms flat. So notice here, I kind of like pop off. Lower back flat, you're going as high as you comfortably can. For me, it's right here. Hang out there for a couple seconds. Come right down. Come back up. Come down. Come up. And do about 8 to 10 of those. And really focus on breathing at the end of range. So let out a big exhale. If this is too easy for you, because some people actually have like really good mobility, just do it standing against the wall. You're fighting against gravity a bit more. It just makes it a little more challenging. It's going to challenge your core stability um, just a little bit more as well. So to recap, right? So we don't want to spend a ton of time doing treadmill work in terms of warm-ups. Again, not that it's bad, but it's just not as optimal um, as these specific mobility drills that we're doing. You want to make sure you're not static stretching. You can do it if you're super stiff. But if you're going to static stretch, make sure you do it before the active mobility drills because if we just static stretch and that's all we do, you're not going to really do anything to change the length of the muscle, at least for the long term. For the short term, yeah, you might get a little bit um, of a beneficiary, but for the long term, it's not going to really do anything. So we're going to do active movements, which I showed you right here. So again, lower body, we're doing the kickouts, we're doing the 90 90, we're doing the hip airplane, just those three movements. For the upper body, we are doing Oh, I almost forgot here. The extensions, the uh, open and close the book, and the floor or the wall, the wall angels. So if this is helpful for you, like I said, make sure you subscribe. We're in part seven right now. I had 15 parts, but I'm gonna try to trim it down to 10 because I really want to get into some good content to burn this stubborn belly fat and uh, increase some arm size at the same time. So make sure to kind of follow along, go right with the journey. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do A to Z through this part, that we can dominate the weight room, to ditch the gut, get stronger, and ultimately have more muscle so you feel confident with your shirt off. This is Rich, hope you enjoyed, we'll talk soon.